Hi everybody, it's great to be back here again in Itama. And no, it is not Friday. It is Tuesday. We are about to enter our wonderful holiday of Chag Shavuot. I was away with my wife Leah. We went traveling, this time not to the United States. We were in um, Europe. We were in Finland and even Russia, believe it or not. But it's not the time to go into detail because we have a holiday of Torah study ahead of us and let's, we want to get a message out of what this holiday is all about. What does it all mean? I'd like to open up with a story, um, a very difficult story in the Tractate of Avodah Zarah, which talks about Rabbi Hananya ben Tradion, who was one of the ten martyrs. And the story talks about the Romans coming and finding this wonderful rabbi who used to carry a, t- a Torah scroll with him in his heart. And he was teaching Torah to many, many students. And the Romans saying, what are you doing? You're not going to teach Torah. They decide to, they take the Torah scroll, they wrap it around his body. They light a fire around him. They take sponges of water. They place it on his heart. In order that, so when the, obviously they don't want the fire to make him die too fast. They want him to suffer. That's the Romans. They want him to really suffer terribly. And they murder him in the most cruel, cruel way of burning him with a, with a Torah scroll. His daughter is there, and his daughter that comes to him and says, Father, I can't believe I'm seeing you like this. Don't forget, his father is one of the great leaders of Israel. And, she, and his father says, Don't worry, my dear daughter. If I was alone, but here I am with the Torah. And of course, God will take care of the disgrace of the Torah, and will punish those who are disgracing the Torah, and worry about the, what they're doing to me as well. Don't worry, my dear daughter. And his students are around, and his students say, Rabbi, what do you see? And he says, I see the letters, the letters are floating above to the heavens. Although the parchment is being burnt, but the letters are floating to the heavens. This is the difficult story. We, as a matter of fact, we read this story on as well on Yom Kippur, on the Day of Atonement. We read about the Ten Martyrs. And the question is, here we are about to celebrate a holiday, and what is Moshe bringing a story about Ten Martyrs in here? But I'm trying to base this Torah on the words of the Chalban, and he brings us down in, in order to understand the meaning of the holiday of Shavuot. And I'll try to explain to you, try to put these things together and try to make some sense out of it all. And what we see in the story, and we know that every time our rabbis bring down a story, there's tremendous depth with each, in each story. And here we see how, number one, the comparison of a Torah scroll and a human being. You know, here the great rabbi comparing both. He lived a life of Torah. His whole life was... The whole being was, was together, one with the Torah. And therefore, when, the, when he was burnt as well, his soul, of course, can't be destroyed. It's, it's everlasting. The Romans may have thought they can destroy his Jewish soul and destroy the Torah. But no, that, that's just the, the parchment's the external, right, in one hand. When a person, is, his whole being is Torah, it's going to go on above to the heavens. It's not going to be destroyed. And eventually, there will be divine retribution for those who think they can eliminate you know, the Torah and the goodness in the world. It's going to come back, it's going to return, it will be redeemed. It will be freed again. In a way, the soul is just freed from the body and returned to the Creator. This powerful message is really the entire message of the, the holiday of Shavuot, understanding what the holiday of Shavuot is all about. The holiday of Shavuot is different than all the other holidays. Not only that it's only one day, well, the other days have seven or days or eight days, but this holiday... It's unique in that we, our rabbis use an expression, When we are on the Mount Sinai, our, the impurity of Israel left us. What does it mean? The impurities that we had as a nation completely left our bodies. We were cleansed. It was like a being in a mikvah on Har, on Har Sinai. And we actually turned to a pre- Adam Rishon, pre-first man stage, where we in the return to the Garden of Eden, we actually able to rectify ourselves in a way that we are now on the level before the sin. Can you imagine that? And this amazing of um, level that was reached by the first man before he sinned, being in that garden, and reached by the Jewish people again, rectifying his sin, because we on, by receiving Torah will be, of course, the final stage of redemption which we will all reach that stage. 
But every year, when this holiday comes about, as I mentioned before many times, the spiritual entity of the holiday returns. And it's not that we're just carrying out a ceremony, but we're actually reliving an existence, a spiritual existence, and we're actually on that level. We can reach that level on the holiday of Shavuot of being before the sin of the first man, of going back to the Garden of Eden. So we can actually return to this garden. Let's go! We have to utilize, utilize this great holiday for that purpose. And how does the story again, which I brought down, of, of Rabbi Hanini ben Tradion, how does it connect to Shavuot? What is this message of the Torah scroll and the, and the letters burning, etc.? In order to understand that, we have to understand the difference between the first Duchot, would be the first tablets, which is really we celebrate the holiday of Shavuot, the first tablets, and, this, and the holiday of, of Yom Kippurim, which were, was when the second tablets were given, because the holiday of Shavuot really was the first tablet time. So if you look at the differences between these two tablets, we'll understand. The first tablets have a couple of unique uh, aspects relating that. Number one, God gives Moshe Rabbeinu this work of, of God gives him the tablets made, God made the tablets didn't say you know, what, what, you know, what he made them you know, how, he, how he made them, they were given Moshe, he received these tablets of stone from God these they were God tablets godly tablets, number two the actual writing on the tablets was not only by the hand of God, because both tablets that was in common that God wrote them, but here the writing went from one end to the other end and if you, you were looking at it from this side, let's say both of us wanted to read the, the tablets together, I would be standing on this side and you'd be standing on the other side we both read it the same way. It was miraculous. And they were engraved, and certain letters actually stood floating within the tablets, and they didn't fall, like the Samach, which is around letters, did not fall out when they were engraved in the tablets themselves. So all these miraculous things it was actually made by God, and the way the letters w w went from one side to the next, um, this was within the first tablets. The second tablets, on the other hand, God, we mentioned before, wrote them, but it wasn't written the same way. This doesn't mention that concept of being from one side to the other side, which means they were written like a regular writing. Number two, Moshe Rabbeinu is the one who was told to carve out the stone. He wasn't given ready-made stone from Hashem. Moshe Rabbeinu had to work here and get this, you know, get, get going to carve out the stone. And of course, the question is why there are differences. What do these differences mean? And in order to understand this, the Chalban mentions, again, the concept of light and vessel. You know that we're constantly talking about, in, in our Kabbalistic teachings, about lights and vessels. What are lights? Lights are, again, a spiritual, um, spiritual influence which comes from above in the upper worlds. And every time, for example, we do a commandment and do God's wor word in this world, you know, having more spiritual abundance come down from above in the upper worlds. But it's a constant connection between the upper worlds and the lower worlds, we know that. A vessel is what receives God's light. The light can't be accepted and discerned without a vessel. That's a constant. The highest level we can talk about is when the light and the vessel are one. That's a high, one of the highest spiritual existence. We say, Hu vishmo chad, him, he and his name are all one. Which means, it's all one unit, it's like a fire. You can't really distinguish between the vessel and the light itself. That's a very, very high spiritual realm we can think about. Um, after, the, of course, the Ein Sof, the highest level beyond, which goes for the infinite, which we can't even focus on, right? But there's a level of, such a high spiritual level, a highest world, where the light and the vessel are one. And then as it comes down, the vessel becomes clear what the vessel is, and it becomes clear what the light is. And we, again, by, every kind of, by doing the Torah and by doing the mitzvot, we are filling up our spiritual vessels. And of course, a human body, in a way, is a vessel. It's a garment which, 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 which the soul is within us, of course. If we look at the tablets, which is an amazing thing, the first tablets, they were carved right from one side to the next. The carving is actually, the letter itself is light itself, which is carved out into the, into the tablet, but the material and the material of the tablets itself, together with the Engravement is one, it's the same thing. So it was such a high spiritual creation. These Lucho, the first tablets, was that there was no difference between the, to the vessel and the light. And that was a very, very high, high spiritual, spiritual level of these first tablets. 
on the other hand, if we look at the second tablets, like we refer to a, a writing of on one hand God wrote them, but we know the writing was more like a writing of when you're writing a, um, an, a Megillah, when you're writing any kind of book. The ink is a different entity than the, from, from the Homer, from the material itself. Two different entities, ink on one side and the, and the material on the other side. That's a very big, very big difference. And what is the spiritual meaning behind this? Is that when we spoke about the story of the terrible story, which I opened up with, Rabbi Tradion, was that he was at such a high spiritual level that his body and soul were really one, and they and they think they can destroy the Romans are going to destroy the Torah. No, the body is being burned, but really, since the body is one with the soul, the spiritual letters are going up. They can't touch it. They can't. They can't. They can't destroy the soul, which is everlasting. And here in the, in the tablets itself, the, the spiritual entity is together one with, with the material itself. This represents the, the pre-sin of the first man, is where the physical was completely spiritual. If we go back into the, into the Garden of Eden, we know that Adam and his wife were walking around nude and they didn't realize it. They didn't even pay, they didn't bother them, it didn't have any effect on them because they're completely, at that point, rectified the spiritual and, and the physical as one unit, until the sin, of course, came along. And this, again, is, represents the level of redemption where we're going to reach one day, the level of rectifying our physical and our spiritual, and, and bring it, combine it being one light, making the vessel and the light one entity. That will be returning to the first tablets. That's, we're going to be returning to the first tablet stage eventually. The second tablets, on the, on the other hand, have, to, you know, the light rests within the a vessel, a very, very clear vessel, was different than the actual light, the letters itself. When we write a Sefer Torah, for example, we write black ink, it's written on the parchment, so the parchment is like the garment, the vessel, and the, and the letters are like the, again, like the soul, and they're two different entities. And that's this world, this world, in a world of so many physical barriers and distractions that we are constantly trying to trying to let the, the spiritual Torah and the spiritual aspects of our lives uplift the physical. But there's still like dividing, you know, big uh, division between the two of them. There's many barriers separating between two entities. And that's a very, very hard work we have as human beings in this world to try to rectify our, our physical. And it's a constant battle with the physical world. And that's really this whole, our whole life's um, work until we reach again, return to the pre garden stage and get back into the Garden of Eden. But we have to realize that God gives us once a year, a day, one day, 24 hours, to return to the stage of Hal Sinai, of Mount Sinai, when we actually were bef- we actually reached, we went back into the Garden of Eden. Uh, just everything to us was just purity. Everything was everything, anything, no difference between physical and spiritual. And that's the level of our, our souls could be, we could sit as we study Torah all night long and just keep getting studying more and going deeper and deeper. We have an ability to relive the experience of Sinai if we just tap into it properly. And that's the gift of the holiday of Shavuot. And that's what I opened up. Again, bringing down the Rav Hanani ben Tadion, the, the martyr, that again, the, the world, you know, the world sometimes thinks it can eliminate Torah, the evil forces in this world, we're surrounded by evil forces, I've spoken this many times, that try to shun out the light of God. But the, again, the soul and the letters go up and they're, never, they're everlasting. And that this night represents the fact that there will be a redemption. We will return to the pre-garden stage. And we as personal, ourselves, can personally tap into that and feel this great experience as we study Torah tonight on the Halte of Shavuot. I want to have, wish you a wonderful, wonderful holiday. It should be a beautiful simcha, a happy holiday. As it says, v'samachta b'chagecha, you will be happy on your holiday. And we should all merit and sing very, very spiritual lights and trying to uplift ourselves and really return and walk the Garden of Eden. Chag Sameach.